Hello, guys. Would you like, would you like some grog? <laughs> uh, have you got anything else on the menu? Would you like some grog? <laughs> no, just grog. Uh, just grog. <laughs> hey, guys, and welcome back to episode 16 of Future's Edge, which is a mod pack by Landstrider. And we're here on Landstrider's Future's Edge server, which is hosted for us by aim to game So I've been doing a bit of work off camera here. Uh, one thing I need to, to say straight off the bat, I kind of realized after I uploaded the last video that I never mentioned this. We've we've upgraded the, the furnace area in our blacksmith. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an improvement. We've got tons and tons of steel now. Uh, obviously, we've got these preheaters and they're not powered yet. Power is becoming a serious issue in this part of the base. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get to that eventually, don't worry. Um, but this is this has been good. I just I'm not too sure if I like how it connects up to this, so don't be surprised if I change this in the future. I this thing sticking up over this side. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll I'll play around with it. I might stick that on top, make another one of these blast furnace bricks and then make it look like a taller chimney or something. That that might work out okay. Um we built this tavern last episode so all the villagers could chill out and as we discovered apparently there's a, a bit of a problem which is that we only serve one drink which is grog and i'm not going to drink this again on camera because that was terrible i'm really sorry about that i didn't realize it's going to have quite a strong effect um as an effect uh, quite as strong an effect um yeah so we need to get some alternative drinks maybe something a little less strong you know that we can you know, we don't want to get completely hammered, we just want to have a, a nice beverage in the evenings or something. So we're going to be working on getting some mead, um, and that means we need to get into bees. But I've also gone ahead and I finished off something here. So you know when I said there's a slime chunk underneath our marketplace, I think it's like under here or something. Um, I kind of dug all of that out, it wasn't very exciting, it's basically just a giant hole in the ground. And I built a kind of like a vanilla slime farm. Um, so every so often the the slimes, you know, they, they break down to the tiny ones, they go along a conveyor belt system, and they get lifted up into here, which is like a slime aquarium, and then they drown. And the slime balls go straight into this frame drawer here. So we've got, oh yeah, half a stack. That is slowly going up. I just never seem to catch the the slimes actually appearing in this in this aquarium, so we'll have to keep our eyes open for that. Maybe we'll get a, get, get a chance to see that. Um, I did a little bit of work around the place as well, so we got this fence along the edge. I just wanted to kind of build it into the train a little bit better or just finish it a bit more. We had this kind of floating platform. Um, and I think, you know, I, I don't usually like to just level terrain and build, but I think that's actually right for this. This is like our city center, it's our, our town center, it's where all the main buildings are. And they would, for the important buildings, have made the effort to, you know, work around, like, flatten the terrain just to make sure everything was easy and accessible. Um, but beyond that, I don't want to keep just building up this giant flat platform. I want to start using the terrain a little bit better. So I've kind of built this retaining wall. Again, we might put some more detail into that. And this staircase that runs down. Um, and I think at some point this episode, hopefully we'll have time because I really want to get it done this episode, I'm going to build, like, an apiary. And I'll talk about that later. Um, now's not really the time for it, because I want to explain it when I can actually show you what we're talking about. Uh, but I also, over this way, we're wow, really burning through our, our food here. Um, I just did a little, little bit of work on the terrain here, flattened it a bit, planted a few extra trees. That's where these saplings are. Some of them have grown, some of them haven't. Um, just to, you know, get some nature back in here. And I've tried to plant a few more around the place, like over here. Oh, it did grow! Oh, fantastic. I wasn't sure this sapling was actually going to grow, but it has. So we've got a tree here. I'll try and get a few more dotted around the place. I might have to build some custom trees at some point. I'm kind of dreading that because that is not a forte of mine. But yeah, this path comes over this way. We've got this bridge now. And it comes over to this area here. And this is where we're going to put our Forester's Lodge. But I'm still not... You know, these bridges, they're okay, I think. I'm not sure if I'm 100% on how how that's looking. I mean, it's better than just having, uh, like, a, a slab platform or something, isn't it, I guess? Oh, these... 
I really need to get used to. I've added a, a couple extra pistons with Landstrider's help onto these um, these legs or boots or whatever it was. I've got to get used to all the, the double, triple jumping everywhere. But yeah, I think that's okay. Kind of takes us over um, onto the extra island. And then if we continue on this way, is it late enough for me to sleep yet? Yeah, it is good. Let's make it daytime so you guys can actually see as well. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Okay, there's the town. And if we continue over this way, obviously I haven't built this path yet. It connects back up over to where the Forester's Lodge is. And this has been a lifesaver. I kind of knew I was going to need a load of leather for those conveyor belts, which is why I wanted to get this thing built. Um, I never actually showed the inside of here either, did I? Got a little bit of decoration and stuff. Um, upstairs area with like a little balcony. You can see out into the woods and watch the, the wildlife, I guess. Um, and then little passageway here into another area. Just little rooms. I don't know. I'll probably find something to do with them at some point. Let's go down here. Oh yeah, we can just travel straight over here if we want to as well. Um, yeah, the reason I want to do this Forester's Lodge first is because I'm really, really running out of wood. I keep having to like plant random trees and chop them down. Um, so I want to have a dedicated place for it. So before I can do that, I need to get the building designed. And so we're going to show this. And this is kind of the rough shape of the structure. Um, also, I've had to chop down a bunch of trees to get this to fit. But I think it's going to be cool. We've got this kind of watchtower in the top so you can look out and check for forest fires and things, right? Um, I think it'll maybe look better when it's... Well, I hope it'll look better when it's finished. But let's grab all this stuff. Switch on our 3D printer. And get to placing. So I guess this is going to take a while of me kind of walking around is a slightly more complex building. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I will cut back to you guys in just a second. Nope, still nothing. Uh, <laughs> right, well, I got it finished. I just had to run, Ooh, better close the door, lazy villagers. Um, I, I got it finished. I just wanted to run back and grab some redstone and stuff because I wanna make this um, kind of hassle-free to use. We've got the, the building here, right? Uh, let's give you a tour of that before we do, do anything crazy. So a bit of a run around the outside. Oh, I need to do some terraforming here. I missed a corner, but I can work on that. That's no problem. I um, guess it's not really much from over here. But if we go into the building, little fireplace here, you know, little staircase leading up um, to this sort of area here. And if we go out, there's actually a way up to this fire tower here. Now, obviously, again, this is based on a banished design. This is roughly what their actual uh, Forester's Lodge looks like, where they go out in the woods and they they maintain the forest, basically. They look after it, make sure the trees are growing okay, and you can get them to chop down the fully grown trees. It's like a sustainable way of farming, farming lumber, um, and that's kind of what we want to be doing here. Uh, I don't want to completely destroy this forest, um, I want to keep like these little paths running through all the the poison ivy, keep it intact. I want to you know keep the natural scenery. So we've got some nice nice paths and things that we can walk along when we're going from place to place. Assuming I'm not just using our our ender all the time, uh, but I still want to be able to see the buildings poking through like this. You know, little glimpses of like the the, the villages and like uh, yeah, you see the building just over there peeking up above the trees. And as I came through that path, we could see you know the bridge there through that. Uh, underneath the arch of the bridge, you can see the other village. I want to keep doing that. So I want to kind of, instead of ripping all these trees down and just mass planting whatever I need, I want to be able to grow them here. And if we're only using one space, it means we need to be able to grow things quickly. So I've got all this stuff. I just realized I need a dispenser as well. So let's grab one, two, three, some sticks. Let's make ourselves a bow. Cool, one of you, we've got the red stones, just grab some cobble. Uh-huh. Is it this way? Yeah, there we go, one dispenser. And let's get back over there. How quickly can we do this? Okay, so we're basically farming. We need to be farming three different species of tree. There's only three different types of wood that I've been using out throughout this entire village. Uh, and those are, we've got spruce saplings, which you can plant in a two by two, dark oak, which you can plant in a two by two, and these, oh, not maple, I've got the wrong ones. The ebony saplings are a one by one, so we're gonna have to go and grab some of those in a bit. Um, 
So if I'm not going to be riffing down the entire forest and just mass planting, we need to have one dedicated area, which is what I've kind of set aside here. And we need to be able to grow those trees as quickly as possible. So I'm going to try and do it the old fashioned way with this dispenser. I think the other solution is to use one of those farming stations, but it seems silly, you know, using power just for the sake of growing one block when there's a vanilla solution. But the problem is to apply bone meal really, really quickly to this, we would have to use uh, a very laggy redstone clock. And there aren't really any clocks in like modded clocks in this pack. What there is, is one of these sequencers. And this is kind of like a clock. You kind of program what sequence you want things to uh, go into. I'm going to need, oh no, I've got my wrench on me. For once, I'm actually prepared. Uh, see if I can get this to, oh no, this is the wrong way. Oh no, that's right. That is right. We want this to go emitted redstone signal into this dispenser here. And then we kind of just have to set a, a pattern for it. The reason redstone is so laggy, by the way, people always say that clocks are really, really bad for your game and your server and your tick rate and they lag everything out. That is true, but the reason for that is not the actual redstone part. It's all of the lighting updates because redstone um, actually emits light when you, when you power it. It lights up and it actually emits particles and it emits light as well. And that's what lags your game out. Every time a clock pulses, loads and loads of, um, oh, there you go, click, like lighting updates. And that's what slows everything down. Um, so using these things, I'm hoping to kind of cut down on how many of those updates there are going to be. Else it causes like block updates and block updates and stuff as well. Um, let's see. So we're going to use the sequencer to put the rapidly pulsing signal into that dispenser. We're going to use this sensor to discover whether or not, um, let's see how we're going to do this, whether or not the tree has grown in this block here. And then we're going to take this out um, just for now, just so I can get it working and show you guys. We'll use some cobblestone here. Um, let's see, we could do, hmm. <laughs> okay, right. Slight sanity cut there, just because I, I, I am not the best person in the world at at redstone. So I wanted to try some things out, make sure this is working before I wasted your time for the next twenty minutes with me just derping around. But this seems to be working okay. So let me see if I can explain this. Right, we've got dispenser dispenses all of our bone meal. We've got a compacting drawer where we shove all the bone meal in, and this is it's only compacting because I kind of fancied having a compacting drawer because bone meal now compacts into these bone blocks, which is kind of cool. <laughs> So we could just store an absolute ton of it in here and it'll pull out the bone meal, keep this thing topped up. Um, and this sensor detects whether or not there's a block in, well, actually just in this block right here. I could change that so it checks a bigger area, but this is the one I want to check. I can control that. And this sequencer is what does the, the pulsing into the dispenser here. So I've got this set up to every other tick, I guess that is. It's gonna send a pulse to the, the dispenser. Loop four means that um, it's on as long as it gets a redstone signal. And uh, when there is no signal, it basically restarts, which means switches off. And as soon as it gets a signal again, it starts the sequence again, right? So if I turn off this lever, this torch turns on. And that means this sequencer is powered and this thing is gonna start churning away trying to apply bone meal, but it doesn't actually use up any bone meal unless there's a block in front of it. Um, turn that off when you're not using it and it'll you know, save all the, the pulses and everything. But we're gonna switch that on for right now. We're gonna try this out. So if I put down some spruce saplings, it's important you do this one last. Boom, we've got a tree. <laughs> then I can use my empowered dark steel axe, just cut the whole thing. Oh, whole thing down. Apparently we can farm ants this way as well. <laughs> um, get all of our stuff and then say we want some dark oak. Oh, I just made a mistake there. There we go. Boom, dark oak tree. We can chop that one down as well. And so forth and so forth, right? So there goes another one. Yes, loads of wood. So now I haven't tried this yet with the ebony sapling. Wow, that was a tough one. Uh, so let's just give that a go. See if that grows too. Yes, it does. But these trees are a little bit annoying. Before I start farming these, I think I want to get some grafters over here. Um, just because otherwise I'm going to rapidly run out of 
run out of saplings, right? But for now, we'll switch that off by turning it on. Uh, I guess I should clean up this mess before we continue recording. It's going to be nighttime soon as well. Uh, so I will see you guys in just a second. Hello, Stefan. Who are you? You must be one of our, our new members. Stefan the Cleric. Married to Yasmin, Father Dion, Mother Cherise. So that's, that's Cherie the Librarian. Okay, I wonder who Dion is. Lloyd the Weaponsmith. Lloyd, you're, you're the person whose name I keep forgetting. I'm sorry about that. Oh, I, I don't know who the other person is. Uh, ooh. This is one of those pinky things. I just had a massive problem with uh, <laughs> with our world here. This We're on uh, Landstrider's multiplayer server, obviously. And usually it's fine, but we just had this weird bug where every time I logged in, I got kicked out. Um, and apparently it was something to do with one of these... These, uh, these mobs here trying to ride a different mob, and that causes some, like, crash loop. It was it was kind of weird. Um, but I'm kind of worried as well. We've got two clerics now. Things are getting a little bit occult in, in this village, and it kind of occurred to me, right? We've got this, this church here, this chapel, and it is directly in alignment with a nether portal right in front of it here. Um... Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about what this is going to do. I'm wondering if, if that has something to do with the number of angry things which are spawning in this building. Um, yeah, we're going to have to keep an eye on that and just just see what happens, I guess. Ooh, ooh, I wonder if... No, still nothing. I promise, guys, we do actually get slimes in that aquarium. Yeah, see, we're up to over a stack now, so they are definitely appearing in there. I just... I never get to see them for some reason. But anyway, the, the point of... This segment here is, before the episode ends, I want to try and get our, our B setup sorted out, right? Um, we want to move on from just having Grog in our tavern over there. I'm a little bit worried that our villagers will go blind if we don't give them an alternative drink, so we're going to work on getting them some mead, and that means honey. And the problem is there is no apiary in Banished. But I looked it up, and there is actually a mod that adds an apiary to Vanished, and so I looked at that design, um, and we've kind of got this thing right here. So when I was looking at the model that they'd used for it, it looked a little bit like a storage barn. Um, slightly different coloring, but basically a storage barn with like an area on the side. Um, so I've kind of tried to fit in with the theme. I basically just used the, the storage barn as the... The basis of this and then kind of tweaked it. I just kind of adapted it to what we needed to do. Um, I know I just released that schematic tutorial saying that you can rotate um, schematics and everything. I've honestly never ever had this problem before. All those buildings I designed, everything, I've never encountered this. It turns out if you have some blocks in your schematic, you can't rotate it. And I did not realize that. So I designed this originally with apiaries in each of these compartments. And the fact that the apiary was in the schematic meant that you couldn't rotate the schematic. So that's news to me. Also, it looks like these storage drawers haven't um, copied across very well in the schematic. So I guess you need to be a little bit careful with those. So what I'm going to do is try and build everything else. Um, let's switch this on. Try and build everything else. And then I'm going to come in afterwards. I'm going to make the storage drawers and get those placed as well. And see if we can... Actually, let's just check that out right now. While well, this is placing away in the background. Apiary. What do we need to make these? Um, just wood, planks, impregnated casing. We need a fabricator for this. Fabricators. That replaced the, the carpenter then. With some seed oil. Okay, so maybe I'll have to work on getting those between episodes. But for now, I think for sure we can get this building built up and placed. That's more machines, though. More and more machines. We're going to need more power. I really need to get that sorted soon, don't I? Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll try and think about what we're going to do for that between episodes as well. Let me just get all this stuff placed. And tell you what, I'll cut back in in just a minute because this is going to take a while and we're running out of time here. So I'll be right back, guys. Okay, it's just about finished. I, I don't know if I've ever shown you guys this, but in this little stairwell here, I've got a couple of little random nature chests that I found while I was out exploring. And I'm using them to stash this stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere else at the moment. So we've got this apiaris backpack. I went collecting bees. We've also got these bee houses, which we'll do for demonstration purposes, but like all of our different breeds here. I think we've got most, if not all, of the basic ones. 
Uh, I'm not going to be actually using them just yet, but right, the idea is you run around the corner here, you come down the little staircase, and we've got a different area here. And this isn't going to be the only thing down here. I want to do some stuff with agriculture here too. Um, but you can go in, just like with the other barn, you've got the two layers. And you can carry on through to the other side if you want. This is going to be accessible from both sides. And I might actually make a little staircase around this side as well. Uh, but then it's got another set of doors here, which lets you come out, and this is where the bees are going to be, right? Little apiar apiarist's yard. And I brought this extra plank here because I noticed that this was missing and it was driving me crazy. Um, but yeah, bee houses, they're basically going to go in these in-between slots. They're, uh, the apiaries are a slightly different color, and it matches better with... It's like a slightly richer color, and it works better with these oaks and spruces and dark oaks and things. This is a little bit day glow for my taste. But yeah, we'll have the um, the bees working away in there. We'll have some flowers in the middle, depending on what they need. And the idea is, because these are just in front of them, we've got, we can put a pipe that will connect them and they will uh, take all the, you know, the combs and the, the drones out and they'll dump them in these framed drawers just for now until we could do something better with them because we do have Gendistry. Uh, but right now, I'm not even sure how we're going to power the machines that... Um, <laughs> let us create apiaries, let alone all the, the high-tech genetic splicing stuff. Um, yeah, we'll have, we'll have a, th whoa! Okay, what's going on? Oh, this is bad. Uh, I'm gonna take shelter in this doorway right here, guys. I think we better stop the episode here while I try to figure out what's going on. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye bye